everything about this show was chaotic. <laughs> everything about this show is chaotic. Everything about this show seemingly is fake. But let's talk about it anyways. What's good, y'all? I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Welcome back to the channel. Or welcome if it's your first time. We're here to talk to Never Ever Met Season 1, Episode 2. It's complicated in real life. If you are a brand new viewer or a returning viewer that is not yet subscribed, I hope that this is the video that changes your mind and gets you to hit that subscribe button. Thumbs up the video if you enjoy this particular piece of content, y'all. Then as always, hop in the comment section. Always a lot to talk about with this very, very chaotic show. Let's talk. So before we get started with the actual episode, um, Dominique and Neek, who remember they are the couple, um, the second row, the first couple, Alexis and Dominique there, that got into the physical altercation on the very first episode. Well, Dominique decided to get into my comments and kind of let me know how wrong I was about everything and how, you know, we the people that have an issue with, you know, domestic disputes, with violence, with physical altercations, how we're wrong. Um, Dominique said that they were just on the drink, blue face, and Krishan type-ish, and that the sex be better afterwards. Grammar be damned, it's not okay. It's not like y'all are too old to feel that way about a physical altercation. He then went on to say that him and Lexi were laughing at it. That, you know, the people that know him in real life knows that he would never beat on a woman. He never has. He has two daughters that he does not even give a whooping to. He said DV is something that you see on the ID channel or what Ike did to Tina. But, you know, me... Um, a weak, weak ass blogger with no following lab labeling the situation wrong is what bothers them. He said that this was just a drunk riffraff and, you know, she was swinging on him too. He said that I'm on here talking about a push as if she is in protective custody or paralyzed and that I am stretching it. He has gone to several several bloggers comments and made um videos and made the same type of comments in their their comment section i still think it's disgusting that own even allowed that to be shown there was no trigger warning there was no disclaimer there was no 800 number in that episode today they gave us a trigger warning Okay. Dominique and Alexis also went on She Live TV in which they did an um an interview where they said that this is all fake. They were friends before this, never romantically linked together. They were friends that wanted to come on and use this as an opportunity, I guess, to become social media influencers. It was scripted. The fight was scripted, the argument was scripted, all of that. Alexis then went on to say that the argument was scripted, but the fight wasn't. Nonetheless, he feels that, you know, everybody's blowing it up and it's not that big of a deal. They are still friends and they're going to continue to move forward and, you know, be the aspiring social media influencers that they want to be. Shout out to you, Dominique, because I'm sure you'll be back in the comments telling me I'm wrong. But welcome and thank you for watching the video, babe. I appreciate you. All right, let's talk about the episode. So the episode picks up where they are still arguing. You know, let them tell it is fake, it's scripted or whatever. So be it. He pushes her and then he's in her face yelling for her to stop playing with him. He's uh, She is swinging at him before she picks up a big pot I guess that she going to go upside his head with Josh and Shay come in and pull them apart. Production comes rushing in, removes him from the house and said that he is going to be going to a hotel and he's not coming back tonight. We hear him say outside that he should have just took his ass to bed. Yeah, you probably should have. You probably should have. But you chose to get upset over the fact that she said that Greg had on hoochie daddy shorts. You decided to put your hands on her and to put your hand around her neck. But hey, 
So the guys are outside playing chess and Brandon is explaining what happened with Dominique. Apparently everybody did not, you know, everybody wasn't a witness to the situation. So the guys are all outside talking about what happened. Oh my God. Whoa. He put his hands on her. Whoa. You know, all the, like the fake hysteria. Cause let's be real. A lot of these men in there, they didn't care. Inside, the ladies are talking, and Diamond feels that Alexis should have tagged her in because I guess she'd have went upside his head. Violence is not the answer to violence. <laughs> no, everybody should have kept their hands to themselves. But here we are. So Aaron H., who is um, the older Aaron, the preacher man, um, talks about how he himself was in an abusive relationship where the his his woman was, you know, hitting on him. He tells Alexis that she needs to remember how she feels in this moment. So that people that are in these type of situations, in these type of relationships, often forget about what happened until it happens again. So, you know, somebody goes upside your head, somebody pushes you, somebody disrespects you in a physical way. They come back, they're apo they apologize, most are apologetic. You forget about it because he seems sincere in the moment. So you decide to just move on from this. And then a month later, he does it again. So Aaron H is just telling her like, don't forget how you feel in this moment. Because it's going to happen again. So now Alexis starts crying, but I didn't see one tear fall. Not one tear dropped. I can probably blink right now and have more, more moisture around my eyes than she gave in that moment. We see Taronda come to the house the next morning. Taronda going to wear me out with all these fedoras. <laughs> but Taronda comes to the house the next morning to talk to Alexis. Um, Alexis tried to make it seem as if it's just because he was drinking. He's not really like this. You know, we had a little too much to drink and that's what that is. Taronda reminds her just because somebody is, is drunk or inebriated, that does not give them license to hit you or push you or choke you. It doesn't excuse their behavior. So Taronda then plays a video from Dominique where I guess that was an apology. It didn't feel like it. It felt like he was saying whatever he could to stay on the show. But he gives an apology, but he finishes the video by saying he doesn't think it was that deep and that they can just continue to enjoy each other. Alexis said that she doesn't like that he said it wasn't that deep because to her it was. So if y'all are doing this, like there's a couple different issues with this. Either Alexis, you are laying it on super thick as if you are truly a victim in this situation, but you said that it was fake. So I don't know what's more disgusting. The fact that y'all would set this up, if it, if it, if that's true, that y'all would set this up or the fact that knowing that you set it up, you're out here trying to act as, act as a battered woman. It's disgusting. It's disrespectful to actual victims of DV. And it's just stupid. It shows a lack of common sense. It shows a lack of emotional maturity. It shows a lack of emotional intelligence. But here we are. So Tarana tells her, okay, well, you know, y'all both got to leave. We have a zero uh, tolerance policy here. You got to keep your hands to yourself. So they have to leave. So we see Brandon and Millie talking. So she's open to moving to be with somebody if she is in love. So Millie is in New York. Not Millie. Um, Sienna. My bad. So Sienna is open to moving to wherever somebody is if she is in love with them. So Sienna lives in New York. Brandon is in Florida. So they're talking about how they're going to get back together so that they can make some time to see each other, mainly with her coming down to visit him in Florida. She's like, yeah, well, I'll see if I can make some time. I'll try to make some time. I'll try to make some time. Somebody put in my comments, shout out to you. It's interesting that... These people had all these years where they could not coordinate meeting somewhere, but they show they showed up bright and bright and early, ready to film this TV show. <laughs> 
So I guess, you know, if there's like a continuation, Sienna would definitely be able to make the time. Girl, I don't care how much you work, how busy you are. You have a weekend that you can fly down to Florida. You don't like this man. You don't like this man whatsoever. So we then see the ladies are all sad that Alexis is leaving, talking about they gonna miss her. The house is gonna be different. She has been there all of 12 hours. Y'all are not that torn up that this lady is leaving. Y'all don't know her. <laughs> Y'all don't know her for real. I thought that was hilarious. So Dominique um, is doing a confessional. And he said that this was a character building situation for him. He's still young. And it said for all the girls, hit him up. No. We, we just saw you yoke up the girl that you're supposed to be with. We saw you put your hand around her neck. No, nobody wants to rock with you, sir. How do I know I'm not going to be next? Who, child? Like, okay. Um, Alexis is saying that they will never get back together, that once she leaves the house, that that's it. Don't call me, you know, nothing. But y'all are doing interviews together saying that it's cool and it was all fake. So there we are. We then get Chris and Sandia. So remember, Chris was telling all the guys he's single, they're not exclusive, he dates many girls, all this type of stuff. So he's telling Sandia, I don't even find any of the other women here attractive. I don't want to flirt with them. Okay. So Sandia confirms that they are indeed not exclusive. So why are y'all here? I think that's the part I don't understand. Why are y'all here? If y'all are not together, y'all are not exclusive, what is the purpose? <laughs> what is the purpose? Um, so she said that it's not necessarily what he says, but how he says it. I can understand that. He did kind of say it like she just wasn't an ish. He was talking as if, you know, she ain't nothing. She just a girl. Like, it, it was, a lot of it was his delivery and his tone. So he then goes on to say that he does not trust women. She feels that if you don't trust me, why are we here? What are we really doing? He said, we're here to build trust. She just don't want to look bad. He tells her he's not trying to make her look bad. He then said that she's such a baby and then they laugh about it and I guess everything's okay. Girl, Okay. So, Tarana comes out and tells them they, are, they have an intimacy suite, basically a boom, boom room. So, if y'all want to go stick and move real quick, y'all can go stick and move. So, they are there to do a Kama Sutra exercise with the couples. Joanna Jody is geeked because she is, I guess she says she's a sexologist. She comes off very prudish and guarded and standoffish, but she's a sexologist. So, Tarana's going to hold up these different poses from the Kama Sutra and the couples get to pick which pose they want to reenact. I do not think this was a necessary exercise to do in front of everybody. What are we what are we really trying to accomplish by us getting in and the ego and all this other type of stuff in front of everybody? I think it would be different if they're receiving like individual couples therapy, but for them to do it in front of everybody to me doesn't make sense. Does not make sense. So Anna and Joanna, Anna, Aaron and Joanna don't have any chemistry at all. She don't like him. I don't think she liked him before they came on the show, but she does not like him. Um, Greg was ready, like Greg and Millie, they got down. He opened her legs and ready to slide her. She jumped up like, wait, what? He got too into character. You don't know her like that. You do, but you don't. So <laughs> everybody was like, whoa, relax a little bit. So uh, Sienna had a little attitude with Brandon. She picked a pose. So most of the couples picked a pose outside of Aaron, Joanne, and Jody. And then Sienna and Brandon, where they are looking at the other person. The pose that Brandon and Sienna picked was trash. Okay? I don't even think that's a real pose. But Sienna had a little attitude with Brandon because he was like, he didn't like the pose. He was like, I feel like I'm getting ready to just watch TV. She said that that put her in a bad mood. No, Sienna, you came in with bad mood. You came in with bad energy. You don't like him. 
I think you, you just don't like Brandon. And instead of you just kind of being real about that, you are going to drag this man and project your own insecurities, project your own uh, negative energy onto him. Instead of just being honest about it. I don't think in, uh, there are very few couples out of the seven that's on the screen that I think honestly and truly like each other. I think these people were dating just to have somebody to talk to, you know, when they bored, when they alone one night on the internet, maybe FaceTime, whatever the case. And the opportunity to be on TV, because I feel like Anybody that comes on these type of shows, this, Love is Blind, Married at First Sight, Ready to Love, any of these shows, y'all are coming on because y'all want attention and y'all want to become an influencer. You want to become like a public figure. Y'all are not coming on truly to find love. And I feel like this show is no differently. So Brandon and Sienna are playing pool. And she randomly is like, let's talk about what we talked about earlier. Let's reroute to that conversation. She goes on to say that he should move to New York because if she moves in with him and they are not married, there is no incentive for him to want to propose. I agree with that, right? For, for some people, shacking up does work. But for some people, shacking up just does not. There is no incentive for the man to propose if you're already in the house cooking and cleaning and doing all that type of stuff. When you're living as husband, is living as husband and wife, a lot of times the man just does not feel the need to, you know, put a ring on it. He doesn't. He feels that she's very inconsistent with her answers and tells her that, like, you be flip flopping. You're flip flopping. She then tells him, well, you know, you are the second or third person to call me inconsistent. He's like, like here or just in general. She said the last couple men that she has dated has called her inconsistent and that hurt her feelings. Sienna, what are we doing? Like, honestly, what are we really talking about here? If one person calls you inconsistent and you're like, dang, I'm not inconsistent. Okay. Okay. By the time the second person in a relationship calls you inconsistent, there's a pattern. So it might be you, sis. So for this to be the third person and for you to just wig out like this, girl, you are inconsistent or you're a liar. I would have called you a liar. Inconsistent is putting it nicely. So he tells her, well, you don't listen. When we're having conversations, you overtalk me. You listen long enough to respond, not long enough to understand, which is a lot of people's problems. A lot of people do not listen for understanding in a the conversation. They listen so that they can respond to the person to get their point across so that they can win the argument. Out of the clear blue nowhere, she was like, you a bitch. I, the way I paused my TV, girl, what? What are you mad about? What are you mad about? You have said that he is not the first person to say this. So the audacity of you to be upset about it. See, Sienna got mad about it because it's the truth. You are inconsistent. You are a flip-flopper. Hell, you are a liar. And he's not letting he's not letting you sit back and roll with these lies. We saw you say, I believe earlier that day that you would be willing to move to Florida now it's becoming she don't want to live down there she doesn't care about Florida that much what do you mean what do you mean um production then gives a flashback to I guess them talking in their interview and she is saying how she's willing to move anywhere for somebody if it is the person she is in love with Brandon that means that she does not love you sir she's not in love with you she don't really want to be with you she then tells him that he has kids by multiple people so who is really inconsistent I said wow that was a low blow she also feels that him being divorced shows that he can easily break a promise. So what we gather is Brandon got married at 20 when, so Brandon got married at 20, I believe when that girl, whoever his ex-wife was, was pregnant. It did not work. They were divorced by 21. 
I'm not going to hold that against anybody. Y'all were too young to get married. Whenever you hear about people that got married at 20, 21, they're divorced by 22, 23, 24, I, I don't hold that against people. I don't. I mean, I don't hold divorces against people in general because you don't know what led up to that because we're not in that marriage. But when somebody says they're divorced by 21, it's like, I, I liken it to y'all should have never got married more than likely. So they go in and they're talking in front of everybody now. A couple more couples are there. Sienna and Brandon, or Sienna said Brandon, has a history of failed marriages. Girl, he was married once. He got a divorce at 21. He said that he takes marriage very serious. And she said, if you did, you would still be married from when you were 20 years old. So Joanne and Jody is like, girl, what? This is 15 years later. He has been a new person three times over by now. Joanna Jody also points out, why is it that we assume when something ends that it was a failure and not a stepping stone towards growth? And I'm like, Joanna Jody, I don't really like you, sis, because you, you seem rude. But that's a word. His marriage ending at 21 is not indicative of the person that he is now at 35. So... Uh, Sienna feels that he should have tried to salvage the marriage. You are grasping at straws. You are finding any reason you can to just not like this man. You are finding any reason you can to have an attitude with him. And it, it's weird. It's very weird. And it's kind of off-putting to say the least. Joanna says, so why do, I'm um, sorry. So then Sienna said that marriage should be forever. Marriage should be forever. Girl, you know how many people in the world are divorced? Marriage is a covenant, right? You you do pledge to, to be with that person forever, but sometimes it just don't work. Sometimes it doesn't work for people. Sometimes it doesn't work if a person is being battered, if a person is being attacked, if a person is being manipulated, if a person is being abused emotionally or verbally or financially. Sometimes it just doesn't work. It doesn't yield to be. You can't salvage every single relationship. Millie then tells, um, ask her, like, have, do you have failed relationships? And she's like, yeah, but they're not marriages. It's giving crazy. It's giving crazy. On top of the, like, strong swoop that she be having going, that strong swoop that just keeps them couple locks just falling on down in front of her face. So we later see juxtaposition of Millie talking to Brandon and Sienna talking to Greg. Now, Greg is just telling her, like, I don't even see your chemistry with y'all. Like, they're having basically the same conversation that Millie is having with Brandon. So when Sienna comes up and goes to bed, she feels that it is just rude and, and disrespectful and out of line for Brandon to be talking about their relationship to anybody, let alone another woman. The only thing that I can see is like, why y'all talking in the girl's bedroom? Go sit down and talk more out in the open, I guess. But like, Sienna, why are you upset when you were, you were literally just doing the same thing that he was doing? You sitting up there talking into, to another man as well. <sighs> Wowza, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video, and I will catch you guys in the comment section. Bye.